All right, so welcome back. So in this wonderful and exciting tutorial, I'll be trying to see how to use a very nice library called L to be able to interact with our large language model. So you already know the normal workflow and the basic landscape of large language models. So most of them, you have to get an SDK, right? And an API key for all of these providers to be able to talk to their proprietary large language model, right? So either through the API, or in case it is open source, you can just get it as a package and then you use any of these libraries to talk with it like Llama, C++, or Llama, Llama file, or Light LLM. Or you can also use Langchain, which gives you both, right? So that you can talk to these SDKs to their respective API and their respective large language models. So the other side of it is that we can use a programmatic approach right using dspy or l so l belongs to this programmatic approach so let's see how to use it so i'll first start with a simple approach using croc and talk to an api and then you see how to use l to be able to do the same thing so i'll just come down here and then let's install so pip install croc right i'm going to install croc i already have it installed and then i'm going to create a simple file i'll call it as uh, brain.py then I'll open here, right? So when I open here, you can see that I have my ENV with my key there, and then I will start working on it. So let's start with the basic approach. So from croc, import croc, right? And once I import it, I can just create my client that I want to talk with. This is the same thing for in case you're using OPD AI. And as you can see, it takes in the API key. So you can just pass in your API key here, but I can just open so from, from dot env import load env and then I'll load it from here, right? Right. So my env is here, right? So that's what I have here. And that's what I want to open automatically load it. And it will automatically be used here. Now how do I talk with it? I can just go straight away and create my chat. So let's go to chat. Then client dot dot uh, we just go straight away with my chat completion so let me paste it and then we will just see how it works so this is a simple approach right so this is how we do that so just straight away so explain the importance of low latency LLM you then you specify the model and then you just print it out so print my chat and then the completions or chat and then my choices then you can just print whatever you want to do right so message content so this is a simple approach right so now in case i want to work with it i can open my terminal so let's open my terminal here inside this location and then let's pin my bash perfect right so as you can see But let's push it to the right yeah so that you can see it well perfect right so inside here in case i want to run i can just simply do python it's not clear enough but yeah we can just python and then brain.py and now this is going to automatically talk to it and then return the result right which is very cool so this is how we mostly do right Perfect. So what you are doing is that we have an SDK and there's a package, the API key, and then we are talking through to the API to the large language model to get a result. But we can do this one in a programmatic approach, which is okay. This is programmatic. You can still do that, but you are just sending a test to that, right? Let's see how to use L to do the same thing, right? So to do the same thing with L, I'll just go with import L. So in case you don't have L, you can just install it from here. So pip install L AI, and then you can just go with all. It has different providers. So this is going to install all the different providers that we have here. So for OpenAI, for Krog, for Olama, for now Anthropic. Perfect. With their SDK. And then I'll just go back again to my brain, right? That's and then how do you use it? So the simplest approach is that you can just go with L, then it works with the creators, 
then I can just load my ENV as I did here. So let's load it from here. Right, and then I will just go straight away. After loading my ENV, all I need to do is that there are two ways, right? First, because I want to use croc, I will just have to initialize and register it. So l.model. But as you can see, there is so many. There is croc. Like there is uh, Olama, there is Anthropic, right? So there are many of them, right? But I'll just go with L, then Croc. Then I'll just specify that I want to register the model. So register. This is important. So this registering means that it's going to register my model and pick the right client to use, right? Perfect. Then I will specify here so it works i just write my function so let's say what is then this function will take in a term and then it take in my type right and then there are two options here you can define the system prompt so here is the system prompt so you can just say um you are a you are an assistant right you can do it like this but it, for now using the system prompt will not work this will fail right so just take it off and just go straight away with the normal user prompt so i can just go straight away with this so define what is right you want to define whatever is there so this is where you write your prompt so this can be any any of the prompt whatever thing that i i place there right this can be your prompt whatever thing that you want and this here is the user prompt right so any kind of prompt you want right any or the test there and then how do you convert this one into something useful programmatically all you need is you need a decorator l and there is two options there is simple and there is complex right so with complex you can supply tools so that i can do two colon right and then with the simple you just go straight away with the simple you specify the model and the client right so let's go with the simple then i'll pass in my model the model I want to use. So the model I want to use is the same model I used here, right? I want to use this same model here from, right? So this is the model I'm using, perfect. That is all that you need, right? And then I'll just save it. So let's run it. So what is, just passing something, what is um, large language or model right what is large language model so this is define this now if i want to run it i'll just come down here let's clear off this and let's run it again and now it's going to talk to it and then return a response right so it did talk to it but because i did not print it we could not see it right so let's print the response so that you can see the response here and now if i run it Going to see the response coming right perfect right so this is how to use l which is a very nice interface right all you need is you just import l you register your model so we are using croc as the provider and then you just specify you decorate it right as simple and then you just specify your prompt here and then you move on with this that is how to use of course there are a lot of things you can also track all that you are doing in case you want to track or the models because it's very expensive right to in case you are trying to experiment you can initialize a studio so you go with l dot init then you specify that you want variables to be true right and then you specify the store and then this one is going to be some logs so i'll just go with my log directory right so this is a format and with this we can track all the things we are doing we can log all of them and as you can see from here there's nothing here but if i run this so what is large language model i can also run another one difference between llms military yeah difference between llm and then no, let's say the industrial applications of LLM you 
in military military and finance right so let's see so this is one way and as you can see we have two stuff so it's going to define this right define or we can just specify change the prompt and give it a different prompt as you wish so let's run it again yeah, once I run it it's going to automatically create my log file and you could see that because I specified verbos you could see the response right so first it's going to give you this option here what is right that is the function called the prompt and then specify that is a user is a defined prompt and then you can see the output right so assistant very cool out of the boss this is very very nice very cool now if i go into my logs here that's created my ldb which has some information that i can visualize right so to visualize it i'll just come down here let's go back to this term now and then we have my log directory here to, to visualize it i'll just go with my l studio Then I'll just give this my L Studio. So Studio. And the Studio goes with storage. You specify the storage where your storage is. And then my storage is inside this location here. Right. This same location I have. Right. So if I run this, now it's going to automatically open this pot, which is very cool. It's going to give us a very nice interface that we can check out. So if I come down here and I open it, we have this very nice interface, right? Which is very cool. So you have all the, the comments that were sent in a very nice way. So this is the function, right? You can actually copy it. You can see what was sent and then you can track all the different prompts, which is very useful for experimenting to know which of the prompt and which of the response is good. This gives you the invocation, gives you the latency out of the bus. If I go back again here, I can see the entire prompt so that you can keep track of whatever prompt that you sent so that it's not wasted because it is an API. Remember, <laughs> we are all talking about an API here and this is costly, right? <laughs> okay, perfect. And you can see that it's working. You can get the information, the latency, the prompt tokens, the completion, the LLM type, right? And you can also click on it to see more, right? Which is very cool this nice graph you can also check all of these things all time and there are some other stuff you can also do you can go to the version history to see the comment message for whatever was sent if i go back to the invocations you can also see the invocations here right with the invocation over time the latency over time the tokens over time right very nice so this is a very nice framework you can search for it with so many features right if I go back here, I can just expand it, go back to the models, and I can, in case I have multiple stuff, I can draw them out. So this is what is, right? I can change the model. So let's try another one. Let's create another prompt. And this is no more going to be what is, but let's call it as I say, yeah. You can just say something. A summary, right? Write a summary, something like that. That is my prompt. And then summarize. No, or let's say give a summary. Yeah. Right, so this is my prompt, and I can just go back again. And let's hide this. We don't want to call them again. We have this function and then I'll say, write a summary about not just industrial applications, but a summary about um, distributed systems. And then LMs, right? So distributed systems and then large language models. So I can now run this. And once I run, you can see the result. So you see the prompt coming, which is very cool, very fast. Krog is super fast. I like Krog. You can see the question, right? Write a summary, the prompt, and then 
the response that was sent. And if I go back to my option here, I refresh it. Let's go back here. So you have my question, what is here, which you can track. And then I go back again. We have my writer summary, the version one, and then you can see the response there, right? Which is very cool. This is so wonderful, so cool, right? Very nice. So that is something I wanted to share with you with uh, L. So there are so many things you can do with it, right? You can apply the same thing for OpenAI in case you have your own client, you have Anthropic, you can also use the same thing with Anthropic. There are so many things you can do, right? So there's a simple explanation of how to work with GPT, but it's by default. And then also in case you also want to do some complex stuff, you can also check it out, right? In case you want to do two colon, you can also check it out. Maybe in the future, you will try and see how to work with two colon. So thank you for watching this tutorial and see another session. There is another way you can also use it, right? So this is one way. But you can also pass in here your client. Right? So in case you have your own custom client, you can create your client and pass in your custom client. Right? So maybe another time, you, I'll show you an example of how to do that. Thank you for watching. See you another time. Stay blessed. Bye.